feel quite confident. For George Bush, Governor perhaps Clinton the most crucial 90 minutes of his presidency. His For Bill Clinton, the big confrontation he's long demanded. For Ross Perot, a huge audience for his message of change and sacrifice. Let's go get it on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. St. Louis, NBC News, Decision 92, the presidential debates. Here is Tom Brokaw. Good evening from the field house of Washington University in St. Louis, where a debate of historic proportions is about to begin. Three candidates for president of the United States on the same stage at the same time. This is the first of a series of debates, three of them over the next eight days. It's the final quarter of this presidential campaign. 90 minutes of questions and answers tonight, a panel of journalists, journalists and exchanges between the candidates themselves. In the audience here, the wives of the candidates and, of course, their supporters. The moderator tonight, Jim Lehrer of PBS. He's the Lehrer and McNeil Lehrer, and here he is now. Good evening and welcome to the first of three debates among the major candidates for President of the United States, sponsored by the Commission on Presidential Debates. The candidates are independent candidate Ross Perot, Governor Bill Clinton, the Democratic nominee, and President George Bush, the Republican nominee. I am Jim Lara of the McNeil Lara News Hour on PBS, and I will be the moderator for this 90-minute event, which is taking place before an audience here in the athletic complex on the campus of Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. Three journalists will be asking questions tonight. They are John Mashik of the Boston Globe, Ann Compton of ABC News, and Sandra Van Oker, a freelance journalist. We will follow a format agreed to by representatives of the Clinton and Bush campaigns. That agreement contains no restrictions on the content or subject matter of the questions. Each candidate will have up to two minutes for a closing statement. The order of those as well as the questioning was determined by a drawing. The first question goes to Mr. Perot. He will have two minutes to answer, to be followed by rebuttals of one minute each from Governor Clinton and then President Bush. Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening, Jim. The first topic tonight is what separates each of you from the other. Mr. Perot, what do you believe tonight is the single most important separating issue of this campaign? I think the principal issue that separates me is that five and a half million people came together on their own and put me on the ballot. I was not put on the ballot by either of the two parties. I was not put on the ballot by any PAC money, by any foreign lobbyist money, by any special interest money. This is a movement that came from the people. This is the way the framers of the Constitution intended our government to be, a government that comes from the people. Over time, we have developed a government that comes at the people, that comes from the top down, where the people are more or less treated as objects to be programmed during the campaign with commercials and media events and fear messages and personal attacks and things of that nature. The thing that separates my candidacy and makes it unique is that this came from millions of people in 50 states all over this country who wanted a candidate that worked and belonged to nobody but them. I go into this race as their servant, and I belong to them. So this comes from the people. Governor Clinton, one minute response. The most important distinction in this campaign is that I represent real hope for change, a departure from trickle-down economics, a departure from tax and spend economics to invest and grow. But before I can do that, I must challenge the American people to change, and they must decide. Tonight, I say to the President, Mr. Bush, for 12 years, you've had it your way, you've had your chance, and it didn't work. It's time to change. 
I want to bring that change to the American people, but we must all decide first we have the courage to change for hope and a better tomorrow. President Bush, one minute response. Well, I, I think one thing that distinguishes is experience. I think we've dramatically changed the world. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but the changes are mind-boggling for world peace. Kids go to bed at night without the same uh, fear of nuclear war. And change for change's sake isn't enough. Uh, we saw that message in the late 70s, and we heard a lot about change, and what happened, the misery index went right through the roof. But I, my economic program, I think, is the kind of change we want. And the way we're going to get it done is we're going to have a brand new Congress. A lot of them are thrown out because of all the scandals. I'll sit down with them, Democrats and Republicans alike, and work for my agenda for American renewal, which represents real change. But I'd say if you had to separate out, I think it's experience at this level. Governor Clinton, how do you respond on, on, to the president on the question, you have two minutes, on the question of experience? He says that is what distinguishes him from the other two of you. I believe experience counts, but it's not everything. Values, judgment, and the record that I have amassed in my state also should count for something. I've worked hard to create good jobs and to educate people. My state now ranks first in the country in job growth this year. Uh, fourth in income growth, fourth in the reduction of poverty, third in overall economic performance, according to a major news magazine. That's because we believe in investing in education and in jobs. And we have to change in this country. You know, my wife Hillary gave me a book about a year ago in which the author defined insanity as just doing the same old thing over and over again and expecting a different result. We have got to have the courage to change. Experience is important, yes. I've gotten a lot of good experience in dealing with ordinary people over the last year and a month. I've touched more people's lives and seen more heartbreak and hope, more pain and more promise than anybody else who's run for president this year. And I think the American people deserve better than they're getting. We have gone from first to 13th in the world in wages in the last 12 years since Mr. Bush and Mr. Reagan have been in. Personal income has dropped while people have worked harder in the last four years. There have been twice as many bankruptcies as new jobs created. We need a new approach. The same old experience is not relevant. We're living in a new world after the Cold War, and what works in this new world is not trickle down, not government for the benefit of the privileged few, not tax and spend, but a commitment to invest in American jobs and American education, controlling American health care costs and bringing the American people together. That is what works. And you can have the right kind of experience and the wrong kind of experience. Mine is rooted in the real lives of real people, and it will bring real results if we have the courage to change. President Bush, one minute to respond. I just thought of another, uh, another big difference here between me. I don't believe uh, Mr. Perot feels this way, but I know Governor Clinton did because I want to accurately quote him. He thinks, I think he said that the country is coming apart at the seams. Now, I know uh, that the only way he can win is to make everybody believe the economy is worse than it is. But this country is not coming apart at the seams, for heaven's sakes. We're the United States of America. We, in spite of the economic problems, we're the most respected economy around the world. Many would trade for it. We've been caught up in a global slowdown. We can do much, much better. But we ought not to try to convince the American people that America is a country that's coming apart at the seams. I would hate to be running for president and think that the only way I could uh, win would be to convince every, everybody how horrible things are. Yes, there are big problems, and yes, people are hurting, but I believe that this agenda for American renewal that I have is the answer to do it, and I believe we can get it done now, whereas we didn't in the past, because you're going to have a whole brand new bunch of people in the Congress that are going to have to listen to the same American people I'm listening to. Mr. Perot, a minute response, sir. Well, they've got a point. I don't have any experience in running up a $4 trillion debt. <laughs> have any experience in gridlock government where nobody takes responsibility for anything and everybody blames everybody else. I don't have any experience in creating the worst public school system in the industrialized world, the most violent crime-ridden society in the industrialized world, but I do have a lot of experience in getting things done. So if we're at a point in history where we want to stop talking about it,